Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Ravi Tayi. He's joining us here as Chief Medical Officer at Endo International. It's a specialty pharmaceutical company. He's going to talk about the alarming results of a recent men's health survey by Men's Health Magazine that says that the life expectancy of men is continuing to decline. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Ravi Tayi, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate the time uh, to be here today. So first off, uh, and as uh, Neil said, I'm the chief medical officer here at Endo Pharmaceuticals, and my job really is to kind of be the link between the company and the rest of the world, which is physicians, patients, payers. So we take the data that we have and kind of talk about it to the external world and take any information we get from there to make any changes to our trials and studies and things so we can do the right thing for our patients and providers. The Men's Health Coalition was formed after we had a um, a survey that was done. It was a national survey that looked at about 1,517 men in March of 2022, where they looked at a five-point scale, kind of asking men how they feel about their mental, sexual, and overall health. These men were between the ages of 18 and 80, and it was commissioned by the Men's Health Magazine. It was published by First Media, and the research was actually conducted by a company called Research Solutions, Inc. And what it, lo- what it saw was the men's life expectancy in the U.S. was declining and is hitting at levels that has never been seen in a couple of decades. Mm-hmm. You know, and the pandemic has actually made this worse because now men are more scared to go to the doctor's office, urgent cares or emergency rooms because of the fear of getting COVID. And all of this has resulted in men really not taking care of their overall health, which includes both mental, physical, and sexual health. Obviously, the pandemic has has shed light on many, many aspects of our mental and physical health. What was it uh, about men that was causing this decline even before the pandemic? What would you say maybe the the main three reasons why, you know, we're just not paying attention to our health? Yeah, so just in general, you know, men, men usually have a tendency to kind of be the caretaker for the family, for their community, and they don't spend as much time taking care of themselves. And when they do take care of themselves, they only think about it mental health. But, you know, overall health is a combination of mental, physical, and sexual health, and they're all kind of interlinked, you know. And when one doesn't take care of their physical health, it has an impact on their sexual health, which can have an impact on their emotional health. So the key there is to kind of take care of all of that as a whole, and as a whole, men don't seem to be taking care of themselves, which is very obvious from this declining expectancy, you know, in uh, in declining rates of their life expectancy, right? And less than half of the men in this survey, which was very uh, disturbing, about 1,517 men were surveyed, and less than half of them scored their health as being good or excellent. And 36% of them actually scored their sexual health to be fair or poor, and 26% of them rated their mental health to be, and mental and physical health to be fair or poor. So those are pretty low numbers, which kind of shows that men are not taking care of themselves. And the other great thing the survey did show was 73% of these men said they want to take care of their overall health, and the same 73% said they don't have access to any clear medical information and they would want that, Hmm. you know, and 43% of them actually said they were so overwhelmed with that information that's out there that they can't trust or they don't know where it came from and it doesn't really help them with them taking care of their own health. What about men being told or conditioned that we're supposed to, like you said, be the the caregivers, the, the breadwinners? And we're told that these aspects of our health are expected to decline and disappear as we reach certain ages. You said the the participants were 18 to 80. Well, some of us right. are told that, you know, once you hit 60, 70, you should expect your sexual health to kind of go out the window. You should expect your mental health to kind of be on the decline. Are these myths? Is this decline preventable? Yes. Yes. So that's a great question. See, the key is that a physical, mental, or sexual health is all in our own hands. It's knowing the information, knowing what's out there, and knowing how to take care of yourself, I think, is the key. You know, in survey, in the survey, really, you know, if you kind of think about what the survey showed in terms of younger versus older men, 
the younger men who were in te- seeking attention was mainly mo- with the motivation played the key role in them not going. But with the older men, it was actually age that they said was the reason. So just because you're old doesn't automatically mean that you know you can't take care of your health. So if you looked at the survey, right, in the, about 18 to 34 age groups, 35 percent coded that the lack of motivation for the reason that they think that they're avoiding care. 35 percent basically just said they were overwhelmed, and 31 percent of them actually said it was because of cost or budget constraints. And then if you look at the middle-aged folks between 35 and 54, 37 percent of them kind of say age is the reason that they're not taking care of them or avoiding care. 30 percent of it was motivation and 26 percent for budget. But then when you get to the older uh, ages of 55 and above, 61 percent of them say, oh, I'm too old. It's the age that's causing my problem. And that's kind of why I don't seek care. So avoiding your care because you're older actually doesn't sound right, because as you get older, you need more care, you need more attention. So it actually kind of contradictory to what you would think it should be. And only 29% said motivation at that age was a thing, and 28% said it was chronic conditions. So just in general, just to simplify it, younger men, they're not motivated to go. Older men use the excuse of age as a reason not to go get care. But overall, just preventative care, having care at the right time, and just kind of being able to have the courage to talk to your doctor about your mental health or physical health or emotional health, I think is the key. Our sexual health is the key to kind of having a long, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Well, obviously, these participants were forthcoming with their answers and their opinions on this survey. Are we Uh not talking to our friends, family and uh, physicians about some of these issues? Even You know, we know we have them. And if we're not talking, why is that? Yeah, no, that's a great question, because, you know, the survey actually looked at multiple things. And one of the things it asked about was both sexual and and, uh, in mental health. 34% of these uh, people that responded to the survey said they're embarrassed even to talk to their doctors about their sexual problems, even though 69% of them said they're open to getting advice on sexual matters. So they're open to receiving advice, but they don't want to talk about it. So that kind of makes it hard for them to get the information that we need. On the same hand, if you look at mental health, you know, it's kind of like what you talked about, you know, men being kind of being this uh, stronger figure and they don't want this to become an issue or a problem that they think that they have that they don't want other people to know. 34% of the patients thought seeking care if you have a mental problem is a sign of weakness. You know, that's a big problem, right? And 33% of them believe only those that can't function can actually get therapy, even though 64% of them said they want therapy. So the way they feel is that if they have a mental condition, they cannot, they shouldn't be able to perform everyday life function in order to get care. So they think they need to be in bad shape in order to be able to get therapy, which is not the case. So I think if people know what it is and having a quick interaction with the healthcare provider and be able to talk about it and be able to get care really changes this life expectancy issue that we've been seeing for the last two decades that's been declining. Tell us what Healthy Now offers and then give us a website where our listeners can learn more. Sure, sure. So visit healthynow.com is the website. And where what this is, is it's a coalition between Endo Pharmaceuticals, uh, SMSNA, which is a sexual medicine expert group, Vault Health, which is the one that's going to be providing some of this care, and then the Men's Health Network kind of help create this. And what it is, is they learn more about their common health conditions at this website where it's physical, mental, and sexual health. They can actually like very quickly book a 15 minute virtual consult, you know, with the, from a secure portal from the privacy of their homes with a healthcare provider. And they can provide you either over the counter treatment, referral to an HCP if needed, and treatment that the Vault Health Services can provide and also provide you options for payment plans, reimbursement, et cetera. Because the goal really for us is to encourage adult men to make their health care a priority to help protect and improve their physical, mental, and sexual health. Because if we think about the focus, it's very simple. Make it convenient so the overall um, you know, access improves. 
and improve their quality of life so their overall health improves. So if we believe if you make it convenient, more people will use it. And if they improve their overall health, they improve their quality of life as a whole for all men in the U.S. And one more time, if you would give us that website again. Yes, it's www.visithealthnow. That's V-I-S-I-T, healthy, H-E-A-L-T-H-Y, now, N-O-W, dot com. Ravi, I appreciate your uh, time this morning. Thank you so much for sharing this information with us. And thank you, Neil. I appreciate your time as well and that of your audience. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Ravi Tayyi. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.